Welcome to The Megan Kelly Show, your home for open, honest, and provocative conversations. Hey everyone, I'm Megan Kelly. Welcome to The Megan Kelly Show. It is true crime Christmas week here on the show. And today we take a look at one of the most despised yet very well-connected men in American crime history, Jeffrey Epstein. This is a far-reaching crime story that leads from political figures in Washington, D.C. to the bright lights of Hollywood and even the most powerful political leaders from around the world. Indeed, it stretches right into the royal palace across the pond. How does a man with no college degree teach at a prestigious private school, make his way onto Wall Street, and eventually accumulate so much wealth he owned his own island, all while sex trafficking untold numbers of young girls to the rich and powerful. Joining me now to discuss it all, Barry Levine, author of The Spider, Inside the Criminal Web of Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Barry, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Megan. Thanks for having me on. Okay, let me start with this. After spending this much time with a subject, the author gets to know him. You know, you feel like you almost not are friends with him, but that you really know him. So how would you, in a few sentences, give us the summary of the man when it comes to Jeffrey Epstein? You know, Megan, I actually went to his boyhood home in Coney Island and gained access uh, through the gentleman who now lives there to actually spend time in Jeffrey Epstein's boyhood bedroom and looked out his window into this bleak, you know, backyard in Coney Island. The apartment had um, water pipes, just a one bathroom, very modest uh, row house type of uh, apartment. And Jeffrey Epstein, from the very beginning, um, was determined to do one thing. He told his um, all of his buddies in high school that he was going to be rich. He's going to be rich beyond belief, richer than any of these, uh, his other classmates was going to blow Brooklyn behind him and was going to, you know, see the world. And Jeffrey did accomplish that. Um, he, however, he made, he made his money, um, a lot of it through, um, grifting. He took advantage of clients. Uh, he was booted off of wall street. He skated on the line of, um, credibility enough that he was able to gain one big client early on uh, and made a lot of money. Jeffrey would um, engage in uh, sexual abuse with um, young women. And but he went back and forth between these two worlds. Uh, And to me, that is the most fascinating thing about Jeffrey Epstein, how he was able to maintain this presence with very smart, intelligent people, very powerful people, people who, you know, made uh, money themselves, people who were incredibly intelligent, you know, Harvard-educated scientists and so forth. But Jeffrey was able to live in their world, but at the same time, uh, he also lived in this extremely dark place. And how he was able to compartmentalize these two worlds and go back and forth, I, I find most interesting. Mm, fascinating. You know, when I, <clears throat> I when I look at Jeffrey Epstein, I think, okay, unlike a lot of the other men who have been very accomplished, but had a very dark side that got outed, I don't see a special skill from this guy other than schmoozing. You know, I think about like uh, Harvey Weinstein, obviously deeply disturbed guy, but incredibly talented Hollywood filmmaker and producer producer. You can't take that away from him. Um, You look at Bill Cosby, right? Gifted actor, comedian, sage when it comes to social issues, when you hear him talk, but clearly had a very dark side when it comes to women. Um, Even Bernie Madoff, right? Like he, he was the head of the SEC before he decided to do a Ponzi scheme uh, during a time of trouble and had genuinely accomplished a lot, pulled himself uh, from rags to riches And then, you know, when it went south, he chose badly and it just spiraled out of control. But Jeffrey Epstein, what what was his special skill? He he wasn't some amazing investor. As you point out, he had one big client 
Lex Wexner, the guy who owned and up until recently even owned um, the Limited, which owns Victoria's Secret and Bed Bath or no, uh, Bath and Body Works, among other companies. I can't find another accomplishment other than landing that client that he did in his whole career. Jeffrey was a mathematical genius. Um, Jeffrey could have worked um, uh, for the military. He could have he he could have had a um, very uh, um, distinguished career if he wanted. But this was a guy who never really um, um, wanted to play in someone else's. Um, um, you know, ballpark. He marched to his own drummer. He, um, you know, he, he, he went back and forth uh, attempting, uh, attempting some respectability and, and attempting to get some credibility. But he was never a guy who was ever going to sit behind a desk or attend meetings and so forth. Um, Ace Greenberg, who um, um, ran uh, Bear Stearns, uh, at the time, um, um, whose daughter, in fact, uh, uh, was was uh, taught by Jeffrey at the Dalton School, uh, suggested to her father that uh, that this Mr. Epstein is a genius and so forth. And that led to Jeffrey's first um, job on Wall Street, where he didn't last very long because he got in trouble with the SEC and after an investigation, uh, even though he became a at the time, a short period of time, a very brilliant, brilliant options trader. Um, Jeffrey was relatively booted out of there. Jeffrey never was able to maintain um, anything for a long period of time. Uh, he, he wanted to go to Harvard, but he, he um, ended up at uh, two schools in, in New York and never, never graduated his Wall Street career was uh, w- was very short lived. Uh, he um, disdained, in, in a sense, just the normal way of life. This is a guy who wanted things done his way. And as he became older and as he became richer, he created this world um, around him where he was in total control. I'm not just talking about the the sex trafficking and, and the abuse of the young women, but it was everything. It was it was everything about how his um, many servants and employees at his various homes in the Virgin Islands or New York or the ranch in New Mexico or Florida, how they had a dress, how they couldn't look him in the eye, how the temperature in his bedroom had to be set exactly uh, at uh, 58 um, um, degrees, how there had to be X amount of towels folded in a proper way um, outside the uh, massage room. This was a guy who um, uh, lived and existed in, in his own world, this very dark world, but to outsiders, um, wealthy people former presidents, uh, foreign leaders. He was a character. He was a gruff talking Brooklyn kid. He never lost his Brooklyn accent. Um, There was an attraction. There was a charisma about Jeffrey Epstein that um, um, attracted um, a lot of these wealthy people. Um, And it was, it was just something about his presence that he was a guy who for the most part, was a failure at any attempts at real business, but uh, created a, a huge amount of wealth, I, I believe, through blackmail, through extortion, uh, through stealing. Um, Wes Wexner said he, he stole um, uh, more than $40 million from him. I believe that figure um, to be, uh, uh, frankly, much more. Um, he was involved for a period of time, uh, for a period of time with arms dealers, uh, Ag- Adnan Khashoggi, uh, Sir Douglas Lease. Uh, Epstein stole countless uh, 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 tens of millions of dollars uh, from these guys through being the middleman in um, arms trading deals. Um, 
but it, as I said, it was his uh, presence, his persona that captured um, uh, these uh, these uh, other individuals, and he mm-hmm. and he went about his life collecting these people. Um, almost as if he was, you know, collecting them on a trophy chest or, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the Donald Trump, the, the Bill Clinton, the Harvey Weinstein, uh, the Les Wexner, uh, Prince Andrew, uh, the former Israeli prime minister, Ehud Barak, uh, ke- actors, you know, Kevin Spacey, um, uh, you know, he he collected uh, uh, Harvard professors, scientists, um, anybody he could think of that he could bring into uh, his world. And a lot of it I, I um, get to a little bit in the book is that I do think that doors were opened for Jeffrey Epstein among very wealthy men in the financial community in New York. Uh, because uh, because he was Jewish, because he was able to uh, talk this, um, 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 you know, Brooklyn type of jive uh, that was attractive to these to these guys. Once he got less Lex Wexner, yes. you could dro- he could drop that name with everyone. So that must have made life much easier. But how did he land Lex Wexner? to begin with well he was he was actually on a on a um a commercial flight and the guy who was sitting in first class with him uh had been a uh, associate of les wexner and again jeffrey just can talk and talk and talk and um uh gained the uh the the, the trust and confidence of this particular individual who uh then mentioned him to Les Wexner. Um, Les, uh, uh, as I said, um, uh, 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 whose, whose mom uh, grew up in Brooklyn, uh, had had the base of his operation um, out in um, uh, near Columbus, Ohio. Um, that's where he had uh, started his, his company, The Limited, which um, uh, one of their main assets had been Victoria's Secret and so forth, and he became extremely, extremely uh, uh, wealthy uh, through the ownership of that um, of, of that company. And Les at the time was uh, looking for uh, someone to bring in uh, a financial genius to help him sort out not only uh, his, really his personal uh, financial assets. And Jeffrey was very good at protecting other people's money. Uh, and as I said, he, he managed to skate on the line of, of the law where he was able to move money around to various offshore accounts, yes. create yes, we different- saw. He, he was uh, cor- expert at that. But th- that explains it, because so as I looked and, at it, I just thought if he hadn't gotten Les West- Wexner, it, it never, no, nothing else would have happened for him because he wasn't really making it objectively in business. But once yes, you bag a whale correct. like that, you can use him to get anything. And it, and frankly, it didn't even seem like he needed to recruit other clients after that because Les was giving him everything. And Jeffrey, according to reporting I've read from ABC and others, was skimming, was yes. engaged in schemes where Les, he would take like nine million of Les's money yes. from Les's charitable trust and put it into his own charitable trust. Yes. But suddenly he, it would be might. 11 million. And he was doing all sorts of funky things with Les's money. There, I, I agree he stole from Les and he stole a lot. But can you just, do you know whether he had something on Les? Because that's, of course, what a lot of people think. Right. Well, I, I, I will say, I, I'll preface that first by saying that there was this inherent trust on Les's part. And again, it had to do with the fact that Les was a, a part of um, what's known as the uh, mega group, which is um, 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 a, a, a group of, of wealthy uh, businessmen across America who support Israel uh, through various um, um, uh, causes, uh, charities, um, um, defense, and so forth. And Jeffrey, uh, again, was a big backer of Israel. Les 
trusted him. He 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 uh, he said that he re, you know he he reminded that that uh, Jeffrey reminded him of the type of individuals that his uh, uh, mom in in, uh, in 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 Brooklyn used to hang out with. And he's and Jeffrey and Les being in the Midwest said you know he said Jeffrey Epstein is different from Midwestern uh, Jews. He's um, he's got this charisma. He's he, he's exciting to be around. Uh, he Jeffrey played him. Jeffrey played him, um, and and really, as I said, less became was the big fish. And uh, for a long period of time, Jeffrey was feeding off of him. And because he was able to make that association with Les Wexner, it opened up so many other doors. Now. Of course, there's been scrutiny all of these years as to what was the real relationship between these two men. Did Jeffrey have anything over Les Wexner? Was he blackmailing him? Did he have uh, something in his back pocket that that uh, uh, allowed um, um, this almost total financial control on Jeffrey's part to? to take over um, uh, Les Wexner. He uh, he even wrote Les Wexner's uh, prenuptial agreement when Les, uh, oh uh, who had been a lifelong bachelor, finally ended up getting getting married. Actually, Jeffrey was against the wedding because he wanted to control Les Wexner. I was going to say, he was the wife. <laughs> a woman came into into Les's world and, and um, uh, things changed a little bit. And, and, and she and others uh, in Les's business were very suspicious of, of of Jeffrey. To this day, uh, Les Wexner has um, uh, said uh, in blanket statements uh, that he was completely unaware of any of the um, uh, criminal activities uh, that Jeffrey was involved in, except there is an, you know, one story um, that uh, it involves a um, woman named Maria Farmer, uh, who in fact, yeah. she is the, the sister, the older sister of one of the uh, four victims that the minor victims that the prosecution uh, ha- has put out in the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. Yep. Uh, Annie Farmer is the only uh, victim of, among the four uh, who has uh, publicly um, put her name out there as uh, as one of the victims. The others have testified under pseudonyms and under um, under uh, different names. But. The Maria Farmer story is interesting because um, 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 in the uh, mid mid nineties, uh, she says that uh, she had been um, 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 attacked by both Ghislaine and Jeffrey Epstein, and and she was actually the artist in residence at That's Leslie right. Wexner's estate in Ohio. Jeffrey Epstein had brought her out there. Uh, and she said that she was held against her will by Les Wexner's uh, security people. Uh, many of these guys off duty um, uh, policemen from uh, this town near Columbus, Ohio. And uh, Maria Farmer says Les Wexner's wife knew the fact that she was um, um, about this incident, that uh, she was kept behind uh, doors for a uh, um, you know, more than 10 hours before her father was able to come out there and pick her up and so forth. Uh, Les Wexner and his wife have have, uh, categorically stated that they knew nothing about this incident. Um, And I personally, after the the, the research that I've done, I I find that hard to believe that um, um, Les Wexner wouldn't have been informed of this uh, uh, horrible incident that took place um, on his uh, on his property, that this yeah, uh, yeah. Young wo- woman was held against her will for multiple hours by. Well, Maria Farmer's own- got a long story. I mean, she, she and her younger sister, Annie, have important yeah. stories to the Epstein case and that Maria was sort of lured in. She spoke with ABC at length in a podcast about Epstein. Um, 
uh, I can't remember the name of it. Forgive me. I, I listened to it, but it was like truth or fault line, whatever. I, I'll get it. But she talked about how they lured her in. She was an aspiring artist. They got to her by saying, oh, we're into art. Yeah, we know we can help you. That's how they got into it, to a lot of young women's lives saying yeah, like, oh, you know, I'm a mover. I'm a shaker. I'm connected. Truth and lies. And um, Maria became part of their staff and then also one of their victims. And eventually she was shipped off to this house in Ohio that was on Les's property, but it was Epstein's house and that turned into its own thing. Anyway, the story, whenever a young woman comes into Epstein's life, it ends badly. I mean, every single time. Yes. Um, and that is where we're going to pick it up after we squeeze in this break. Much more on Jeffrey Epstein and his dark, dark criminal side uh, right after this break when we rejoin author and journalist Barry Levine. Don't go away. It's the holidays and you deserve a gift. How about a gift that keeps on giving you joy and comfort every day all year long? A gift that looks as good as it feels and one that will pay for itself in terms of how much more productive you will be at work. I'm talking about giving yourself the gift of an X chair. I love mine. It is by far the most comfortable and ergonomic chair I've ever used. And honestly, it's also probably the coolest looking piece of furniture I own. Not only is X-Chair the world's greatest office chair, but with its patented LMX technology, it doubles as a massage chair. And you can either cool or warm your back. Can your office chair do that? I don't think so. Now's the perfect time to buy one. Purchase an X-Chair now. Buy early, buy now. And here is X-Chair's holiday gift to you. Save $100 off your X-Chair just by buying it at xchairmk.com now. That's the letter X, chair, mk.com. X-Chair has a 30-day guarantee of complete comfort, and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 a month. Go to xchairmk.com and save. xchairmk.com. So do you know the year that uh, those two met, Je uh, Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell? Yes, Megan. They um, uh, actually um, um, came together in New York in 1991. Um, however, we do know that several months before, um, Ghislaine had actually flown on um, uh, one of Jeffrey Epstein's planes. So... There was a relationship earlier um, before her father's death uh, in which she was introduced to Jeffrey. One of the questions I have is, how did it start? When did it start? Because I know now we're claiming that Ghislaine Maxwell was almost like a, a pimp for him. She went out and got all these girls for yeah. him. Before there was Ghislaine, was there another person in that role? And as far as back as we can tell, when did this start for him, this obsession, like thrice daily, quote, massages that we now know, you know almost always turned into sexual abuse? The only other, quote unquote, true girlfriend that Jeffrey had besides Ghislaine, and there's still questions over what the actual extent of the relationship was between Ghislaine and, and Jeffrey, but... Before uh, Ghislaine came in the picture, uh, Jeffrey had been involved with uh, a woman named uh, uh, Ava um, Andresen, uh, who uh, was a Miss Sweden. Um, he had met her in New York, uh, and they um, uh, dated um, on and off um, upwards of um, uh, 10 years uh, in the 1980s. Uh, in Jeffrey's official biography that he put together at the time of the uh, Florida case in 2005, um, uh, I, I would just love to read a few lines from this. He said that after, and this is written in the third person, after Ava and Jeffrey decided to put their relationship on a platonic basis, Jeffrey entered into another significant relationship with Ghislaine Maxwell, then 29 beginning in 1991. Um, and Jeffrey writes in this biography, Elaine came to New York at a very dark time in her life. Her father had been found dead, uh, floating in the Atlantic Ocean, having gone overboard on his yacht. Um, Jeffrey writes that Elaine met Jeffrey through mutual friends. She found the friendship immediately rewarding. And he, as he engaged her in intellectually stimulating conversation. Uh, and Jeffrey writes that, um, um, <clears throat> moreover, uh, he uh, attempted to keep her from becoming despondent. 
Uh, he gave her books to read, scientific studies, novels, uh, challenges to her mind. Uh, Jeffrey writes that he uh, took her to comedy clubs on a weekly basis um, to um, alleviate her um, um, growing depression and so forth. Uh, and Jeffrey writes that without his help, she would have fallen into a, a deep depression. Uh, Jeffrey also writes that he gave her a loan to get her uh, a financial foothold in the business world and so forth, um, and, and, uh, and, and so on. Um, so Ghislaine, who was 29 years old, came into Jeffrey's life in 1991, uh, there had been an incident that occurred through a, a, a civil lawsuit, an incident that occurred in the mid 1980s um, down south where Jeffrey was on vacation. And this Jane Doe alleges that she was um, um, uh, 14 years old or so and that uh, she was the daughter of the um, um, woman who was um, 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 running this um, uh, hotel or um, um, uh, house where Jeffrey was staying and that she had been um, um, sexually attacked by Jeffrey. Uh, however, she had, she did not report it to her mother out of fear and so forth. Mm. So we have a, um, in the timeline, we have this one incident in the mid eighties uh, that, that, uh, um, uh, had been written about in, in a civil lawsuit involving what might have been um, Jeffrey's uh, first um, um, sexual attack on. He was a, born in fifty three. Uh, just so, just right. He was born in fifty three. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, yes, so yeah. mid eighties. He was. He was. He was thirties. He, he was in his thirties. Yes. Uh, previous to that, uh, I report in my book that there had been a a stalking incident um, uh, over a girl that he was obsessed with in high school. Um, uh, he had followed them to a, a movie theater and so forth. Her, her boyfriend at the time threatened to beat Jeffrey up and so forth. Uh, he was fixated on this one, one girl. Um, and, uh, but then again, um, he became a teacher at the, at the Dalton school where Students found it very strange that Jeffrey, and he was um, 21 years old at the time, would show up at uh, student parties. He was the only teacher who would show up at student parties. And he was um, um, spent a lot of time around the female students. And I report in the, in the book, uh, minor victim number one, who has uh, testified in, you know, in the trial Jane? when they uh, approached her at a um, music camp in Michigan. Oh, where that Jeffrey was crazy. Was no, we've talked about this on the show. She, so she testified in the Ghislaine Maxwell t uh, trial that she was at summer camp as a 14 year old. I mean, she's a middle yeah. schooler. And these two come walking along in Michigan, Ghislaine with her little dog and approach her and start chatting her up and they bond. And lo and behold, they're all from Palm Beach originally and have homes there. And that's where this young girl, Jane, actually lived. And they followed up and that, you know, it was the old, I can make you a star. I know everyone in the industry. I could be of great help to you, but you have to learn how to behave. And one thing led to another, according to Jane, and he started molesting her. However, the cross-examination is saying, uh, you know, of, of Ghislaine's lawyers yeah. is pointing out, you never raised that claim until there was a Jeffrey Epstein defense fund. I mean, a, you know, fund for potential victims. You um, didn't make any of these allegations while he was still alive. You, your story has changed over time about what Ghislaine may or may not have done. You never, it's just so hard when that much time goes by yes. to try to hang a criminal case against it. I'm not saying Jane didn't, is making any of this up. In fact, there's every reason to believe he did it because he spent a lifetime doing it. Just saying... Yes. It's almost impossible to prove criminally when it's what, you know, 30 years ago, almost. It's like that's one of the challenges. And and that's actually one of my bigger, bigger questions for you is even in the Ghislaine Maxwell trial, all four of the victims who have come forward are from years ago, years and years yeah. ago. So where did he stop doing it? In the same way, I, I'm wondering, when did he start? Right. Yeah. When did he stop? Because. We have not seen or heard from victims, as far as I know, in the, in like the last decade of Jeffrey's life. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to go back on, on Jane quickly. And I, I did devote a lot of time in my book because to me, that 
um, um, incident in 1994 in Michigan. To me, that was the point when um, Ghislaine lost her moral compass, if she ever if she ever had one. This, to me, was the turning point of when she went to the dark side three years into her relationship with Jeffrey. You know, a, a normal individual, if they found out that their boyfriend um, was obsessed with young girls, would have, despite giving her money and finances and so forth, would have run in the opposite direction. Mm-hmm. This, 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 po- this was the point when Elaine made a determination on her own that she was going to go down this this dark road with Jeffrey. So I I I, I do find that um, um, incident uh, instrumental in how she became his partner in crime. I, I call them in my book the predatory Bonnie and Clyde. She presented this cover that Jeffrey never had previously, where. She was a big sister figure where where she was able to present herself to the mothers of these girls saying, uh, we're interested in mentorship of, of, of your daughter. We're going to take care of her. We're going to send her to college. We're going to make sure she gets to go to music school and things like that. Uh, she was the perfect foil for Jeffrey in this, you know, road that they were going to embark on. Uh, and and she, Jeffrey she told many people um, that she was his wife. So if you're a young mom of a daughter who's trying to make it in modeling, she yes. would tell people that she worked for Les Wexner and he yes, would tell people that he was like a casting agent for Victoria's Secret. And yes. they're telling some of these young girls that they're married. So these girls are thinking they're safe and they were anything. Right. But just before we get get a break in, but I, I just want to spend one minute on Ghislaine's background because... Unlike Jeffrey, she did come from a lot of money. Her dad was, he reminded me in reading the descriptions in some ways of Rupert Murdoch, a medium mogul during his lifetime, very well respected, very powerful, very colorful, very strong, kind of scary. Uh, She was the apple of his eye, the youngest of like nine children. I can't remember, lots of children that he named his yacht, the Lady Ghislaine after her. And um, then he died suddenly and weirdly while at sea on the yacht in like calm waters. And there was a real question about what what really went down there. Was he a spy? Did he work for the Mossad? Was she a spy? Was Jeffrey a spy? I mean, I've heard it all asked. Um, but yeah. she had the proper breeding. She went to Oxford. She had all the connections. And that's another way in which she became the perfect Bonnie to Epstein's Clyde. Yes, that that is absolutely correct. She was able to legitimize their relationship in the pursuit and the grooming of these of these young women. And without her, uh, I, I I wrote that there's no way that the extent of of the sex trafficking could have gone uh, as as far reaching as it did with with with, with hundreds of of young women if Ghislaine had not been involved in his, you know, in his life. That and there are true. darker conspiracies beyond that, that, uh, you know, that are connected to, you know, Jeffrey always fancied himself as, as something of a spy, as a, as a man of mystery. He would tell girls that he would, he would say, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a spy and so forth. He, he enjoyed that time when he was an arms dealer, you know, flying o- overseas and having meetings on yachts and things like that. And uh, we, we do know that there were, are connections between Jeffrey and Israel and uh, links to the Mossad. And Robert Maxwell, Ghislaine's father, uh, also fancied himself as a spy. He called himself James Bond. He uh, had ties, uh, direct ties to the Mossad. He was not an agent, but they viewed him as an asset, according to uh, in- investigators, one of my investigators who um, um, uh, dug uh, deeply in, in, in Israel on this and so forth. So uh, there's also a thought that Robert Maxwell had set it up that if something happened to him, uh, Ghislaine would go into the arms of Jeffrey Epstein in America and that he would take care of her financially. Uh, and so there, there, there is a darker uh, story about this, whether or not the two of them were were set to go together as part of this. Oh, I've never um, heard that tra- trade craft uh, um, um, honeypot um, operation to um, um, blackmail uh, wealthy and powerful individuals um, that 
is uh, out there. And, you know, we, we may never know the extent of that because Jeffrey, of course, is dead and, and Ghislaine is, 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 is not going to talk. No. Um, uh, and so we'll never truly know uh, the extent of that. And, of course, the intelligence uh, community in Israel has uh, buttoned up. Um, uh, but uh, th- th- there's no question that there, that it was more than just coincidence that brought them together. Uh, mm-hmm. And as Jeffrey writes in his biography, that he was this helping hand to get her out of her depression and so forth. I don't believe that for a second. I do believe that there was uh, uh, much more there in terms of how uh, as quickly after her father's death that she ended up with uh, with Jeffrey. That is intriguing and a good point at which to pause, squeeze in a break, and then we'll pick it up with their scheme on the other side of this. Much more ahead on the disturbing story of Jeffrey Epstein, his life, his death, and do we think he killed himself, or was there plenty of reason to have him killed? Stay with us. And remember, you can find The Megyn Kelly Show live on Sirius XM Triumph Channel 111 every weekday at noon east, and the full video show and clips by subscribing to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Megyn Kelly. If you prefer an audio podcast, you can have that too. Subscribe and download for free on Apple, Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. There you will find our full archives, more than 220 shows now. Be right back. Black Rifle Coffee Company is a veteran-owned coffee company serving premium coffee to people who love America. Veteran CEO and founder Evan Hafer spent over seven years on the ground overseas with U.S. Special Forces and as a CIA contractor. Evan even modified his gun trucks during the invasion of Iraq to grind coffee anywhere. Coffee's more than a business for him. It's a true passion. Every morning while deployed, Evan would cheers his coffee with his team leader before heading out on patrols. Great coffee has a way of grounding us, no matter where we are. For Evan, it reminds him of cold mornings hunting in the Idaho mountains. Through coffee, Evan was able to experience that perfect morning every day, whether he was in Kabul, Seattle, or anywhere in between. There's nothing better than starting your day with America's coffee. Make your holidays better by giving the gift of Black Rifle Coffee. You want to support the cause? Just go to blackriflecoffee.com slash MK today and check out the freshest coffee in America. America's Coffee makes your holiday shopping easy with personalized bundles, gifted subscriptions to the coffee club, gift cards, and a whole lot of premium coffee apparel and gear. Make your holidays better with Black Rifle Coffee. Blackriflecoffee.com slash MK gets you 20% off coffee, apparel, and gear, as well as 20% off your first month of the coffee club. So, Barry, over the years, uh, one of the questions I had before I knew much about the case was, why didn't anybody go to the police? Why didn't any of these young girls go tell their moms, go to the cops? The older girls, you know, once they hit their 20s, realize what's going on and go to the cops. And what I've since learned, and you can fill it in, is they did. Some did. And it was ridiculously hard to get anyone's attention for far too many years. And this goes back prior to his 2008 arrest um, and like the diminished charges there. So I'm talking about like there were women who stood up and tried to call the cops and get them involved, but no action was ever taken. Uh, That's correct, Megan. I mean, the um, um, Maria Farmer case, for instance, the the incident uh, in which she was held uh, uh, against her will at uh, on Les Wexner's property, uh, in Ohio, uh, after that incident uh, and the incident involving her sister, Annie, um, she went to the um, um, NYPD. Uh, she contacted the FBI. Um, it went absolutely nowhere. Um, uh, it wasn't until 10 years later um, during the uh, Ford investigation that began in 2005 that the FBI circled back and uh, contacted uh, uh, Maria Farmer again. There was a woman, um, um, Jeffrey had uh, attacked a woman at a hotel in Santa Monica, California, passing himself off as a Victoria's Secret model. Uh, she went to the, I looked at the police reports, she went to the police in Santa Monica yes. after she was attacked by Jeffrey. In a I, I heard her testimonial. There. 
Yeah, he said he was a scout. And these women who want to get in the Victoria's Secret catalog, they know yeah. that they may have to, you know, strip down to a bikini or a, a, even a bra and underwear. But he, of course, took it further than that and then wanted to lay hands on women and then did sexually assault this woman, in which she has now said. And she went to the cops and they did nothing. So the question is, with all that doing nothing over the years, like, why? Was it just like, these are prostitutes? Was it one of those things? Was it because he was connected? And these women weren't prostitutes, I want to make that clear. But was was that the attitude of the police is what I'm asking? Well, the police didn't, uh, again, these isolated incidents that took place in Ohio and then in, in, in California, they went absolutely nowhere. It wasn't un, un, until um, a, um, uh, uh, a kid at uh, Royal Palm High School in 2005 was uh, found by a family member with uh, a couple hundred dollar bills in her pocket and they forced that girl to to say where the money came from and it came from this uh, uh rich guy on palm beach who was who was uh, paying you know young girls for um massages and so forth and that's when the palm beach police uh first began their in- investigation uh when this information came to them around 2004 um for the most part jeffrey and uh galene uh, operated um uh from 1994 to um, 2004 uh, with, you know, building this, um, uh, uh, just this hor- horrific uh, life of, of sexual abuse of, of these, uh, of these, of these girls. The problem was, is that these girls were young. A lot of them were, um, there were a couple like Vic, like the, the first victim, Jane, who testified, who uh, ended up becoming an actress and so forth uh, and had a, uh, a music career ahead of her and so forth. But for the most part, they targeted girls from the other side of the tracks in West Palm Beach, um, girls who came from troubled um, uh, uh, families. Uh, Maria Farmer talks about um, uh, repeated uh, threats that had been made um, in the years uh, since, uh, you know, a- a- against her. Um, they would turn on these girls uh, if they thought that uh, these girls wouldn't, you know, c- continue uh, as part of this um, um, pyramid uh, sex trafficking uh, operation. Well, that's that right. They were, so it was a pyramid scheme in a way, because what they did, and by the way, I should say, we didn't get to this, but in, early in Jeffrey's career in the 1980s, he was accused of being part of a Ponzi scheme while at this one investment firm. He was accused of being the mastermind of it. And in a way, that's what he was running with the girls, because... Yes. What he's accused of doing is you get a young girl in and, and the women have now and now they're women and they, they'll they'll explain how it worked. They'd call you in. OK, her, he wants wants a massage. You're going to get 300 bucks. You know, it's like a 15 year old girl. She's like, OK, fine. I don't know how to massage. Ghislaine will show you. Don't worry. It's nothing. They would go in there and massaging him. And then before you know it, he had his clothes off and he's asking for oral sex or he's just he's or, you know, doing any one of a number of things to them. Ghislaine was allegedly in on the actual sexual behavior and with a number of these girls. And then he would turn to this this girl or she would and would say, now go get me another girl. And for every girl you bring in, you get another 200 and so on. I mean, it really was like a like a sex pyramid scheme, a sexual abuse pyramid scheme. Yes. And in in fact, um, um, one of the girls now now an adult named uh, Haley Robson. Uh, was uh, kind of the linchpin in the uh, Palm Beach police investigation in 2005. The police uh, put surveillance on her. Uh, Haley had told me that, uh, you know, she was a uh, young girl there, um, had been brought in for a massage, came, had a terrible life before then, had been uh, uh, raped by, uh, at, at, you know, at a party. Um, there was, came from a very dark place and ended up at Jeffrey Epstein's house uh, she wouldn't um, um, go through with the massage. However, uh, against, she said, her better judgment, she went and brought 35 girls uh, that she knew in the local community there um, to uh, 
um, come to Jeffrey Epstein's house. Every time she would bring a, a girl, she would receive $200. Um, she has to live now with this for the rest of her life that she, you know, brought these, brought these girls in, but the police put surveillance on her and then, um, uh, threatened to um, a charger. She, her, in fact, her father was a, a local police officer there. And the toughest thing she said was having to tell her dad that she, you know, had been caught in, in the mm-hmm. middle of this. Um, the Palm Beach police uh, detectives ha- had the prosecution been done properly. Um, they could have sent Jeffrey Epstein away. I mean, they had the goods yes, on him. In this 2008. was in, in 2005. The, the memories of the girls, is, these incidents have just happened um, in the past couple of years. All the information was was fresh. They had evidence, Jeffrey buying um, um, uh, slave uh, um, uh, servitude uh, books uh, through Amazon. They had the case nailed. And as we know, um, the Florida case uh, fell apart. Uh, because it was um, it ended up uh, being put in the hands of the um, um, yeah, a attorney. local uh, uh, Florida a, a, a attorney. There, the police chief was furious uh, that he that this that um, uh, this guy ended up uh, convening a grand jury. A very rare instance there, only bringing two uh, victims forward in the grand grand jury. The police chief said, "This is th- this is awful. This man has to go away to jail. Uh, he's abusing these girls." Police chief went to the FBI. The FBI uh, began an investigation, a more wide ranging investigation of not only what was going on in Florida, but also what was going on in New York at the time. And they were compiling a very, very strong case. And then, as we know, uh, it ended up in the hands of Alex uh, Acosta uh, at that time um, in charge of the Southern uh, District, uh, in charge of the Southern uh, Florida uh, district and this is the federal was prosecutor, given- the, the U.S. attorney right. the, at the federal level yes. uh, who that he would oversee the FBI's investigation. Oh. He's the one who'd have to bring charges. Yes. Yeah, so they brought it to him. Go ahead. And, uh, and it was a um, uh, he was a Harvard man. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's uh, main uh, lead attorney, uh, Alan Dershowitz, of course, was a Harvard man. Uh, experts say today that, uh, uh, you know, that some type of, uh, um, uh, you know, deal was struck. Jeffrey uh, ended up um, um, being charged with uh, two counts of uh, of prostitution. He did. uh, uh, Just to to stop you for a second. So what happened was, as I understand it, Alex Acosta, and for our listening audience, this is the guy who Trump would later later right. nominate as Secretary of Labor, and he yes. had to bail because this became such a big deal. The He's Epstein thing was outed. Yeah. yeah, so he, but and it was all because of this moment we're talking about. So Acosta, rather than saying, "What do you mean?" The Florida case, they're going to charge him with with it was some BS. It's like a solicitation of prostitution of a minor was basically the, yes. the deal. Solicitation of prostitution of a minor. Okay, a minor cannot be a prostitute. If a minor is being prostituted, she's being trafficked and it's rape what's happening to her. So that's one of the indignities for these victims. Um, But it's only one count. It's a slap on the wrist. Yes, he would have to register as a sex offender, but it's like it's nothing compared to what they could have done. So you think the feds are going to swoop in and say, well, that's bullshit. We're not going to allow that. It was exactly the opposite. He cuts a deal to say, why don't we just let it be a state matter? The state is only about to slap him on the wrist. We can just defer to the state and they'll wrap it up nice and tidy down there in Florida. And Dershowitz, who is a friend of mine and who I really admire, I have to tell you, maybe you know something different, Barry, but I don't blame mm. him for this because defense attorneys' jobs are is, to get you the best deal was. possible. It, and, it was Acosta he, who was supposed to be representing us and the girls. He, he got, listen, Alan Dershowitz did, did his job. Uh, Alan Dershowitz got Jeffrey Epstein off. I mean, it was it was a dream team. Jeffrey Epstein spent a lot of money. He can, he he brought together a, a group of uh, high profile lawyers that we had not seen since, um, um, you know, that we, we, we would see the O.J. O. Simpson uh, yes. case. Uh, th- there's no question. But Acosta also added a, a veiled reference that uh, there was a higher authority involving Jeffrey Epstein, that he might have been a part of intelligence, that it was above Acosta's head. And so you had this 
you know, slap on the wrist, uh, uh, NPA non-prosecution agreement. Uh, Epstein ended up serving uh, 14 uh, months, um, uh, most of it on work release. So he was able to fly to his house in the Virgin Islands. He was able to uh, fly to New York. He had a, uh, um, um, uh, an ankle uh, uh, monitoring bracelet wow. and he had sexual relations with, with a young girl we know from uh, uh, a, a private investigators oh report during Lord. this period of time. It was a joke. Uh, it was a joke. He, he was apparently that- 16 hours a day during his incarceration. He was out of the jail and it wasn't even the real jail. It was some, something called the stockade yeah. down in Palm Beach. But wait a minute. That's that's you know, you you mentioned. OK, so why? Why did they give him? That's the big that's the sixty four thousand dollar question. What was that's the, the real reason? I don't buy Acosta knew Dershowitz from Harvard and they struck a deal. I don't buy that because it was bubbling up that there was more than just these victims. Oh, yes. like, this was a massive. Is, and and, and that's the question whether because there, there's reporting that the young there's the U.S. attorney, that was Acosta, but there was a woman coupled down from him, an assistant U.S. attorney, who was very angry about this being swept under the rug. She's never been allowed to talk, and I'm sure she knows what was going on, but there are too many people too close to that deal who haven't been allowed to talk, who haven't been able to tell us what they think Acosta was really doing or who was ordering. Like, why would they be so interested in protecting Jeffrey Epstein? It's it's it, it goes back to, as I said, the um, coupling of Jeffrey and Elaine, who um, uh, may have been brought together by, you know, it, through intelligence. Uh, we, we do know that uh, Jeffrey Epstein um, gave gave up some information to the FBI uh, at the time of this. Uh, we, we believe it was dealing with financial matters on on Wall Street, that it wasn't that he wasn't rat- ratting out any um, um uh, men uh, as part of his trafficking uh, operation. Um, mm. But uh, th- th- there's so much more mystery to this. And that's what's so frustrating to me about the about the trial itself involving. Yeah. Wait, wait. Involving L- yeah. Let yeah. me st- let me stand you by there, because that's a whole other ball of wax, sure. which we will tackle right after this. Don't go away. A lot of us are dealing with financial stress these days. Credit card debt, a tight budget, the fact that we're paying more for just about everything, it can be overwhelming. And at times it can be confusing. But let me offer a possible solution. Call the folks at American Financing, where you will learn more about the benefits of a mortgage refinance from lower rates to shorter terms. They can even help you consolidate high interest debt. Does that stress you out? Call them. So you have one manageable monthly payment to focus on. And here's the best part. You can save up to $1,000 a month with American Financing. Think about that for a second, an extra $1,000 every month. It's possible with their custom loan options because their salary-based mortgage consultants will look at your entire financial picture, finding every way to help you save. No pressure, no obligation, no upfront or hidden fees. Why not learn more? Call them today for a free mortgage review. It will only take 10 minutes when you call 866-887-1201. That's 866-887-1201 or just visit AmericanFinancing.net. Well, one of the problems with the deal he struck with uh, the prosecutors back, I thought it was 2008 that the deal was struck. Was it 2005? No, no. It, the, the the Palm Beach uh, detectives uh, investigation began in 2005. Okay, the okay, got it. Uh, deal came together in 2008. So once that was struck, one of the contra- two the two most controversial, like, well, maybe not most, it's so, so hard to pick what's most controversial, but a couple of the controversial things about it, in addition to what a slap on the wrist it was, were, number one, the feds are required, the, the prosecutors are required to advise the victims before they enter into an agreement like this. And not only did they not advise the many victims that they're about to do it, they lied to them. They had well, to admit it later in court. They told the victims, oh, we'll let you know, it's pretty proceeding we're negotiating and the deal had already been signed so there was dishonesty within the u.s attorney's office which is extraordinary and we still don't have a full accounting for it for why and how it went down and who told you to do that very frustrating and very suspicious very sus as my daughter would say um and uh the other piece of it is um oh that that 
immunity was basically crafted for Jeffrey's co-conspirators. He specifically named four women in the deal he struck, saying you can't go after them. You can't charge them, which is like unheard of. Right? It's so weird in a deal like this for the feds to agree to such a thing. And um, and then they broadened it. It broadened it. It was like these four people and any other co-conspirators. Others, yes. So this that's a nightmare for the young women who are trying to go after him or see civil or criminal penalties against them. But weirdly, Barry, let's start with this. Do you know why Ghislaine Maxwell was not one of the four women prote- specifically protected by name in that deal? Well, she was assumed to be part of this um, immunity deal for others. Jeffrey did not want her named at the time. He wanted to protect her name by not attaching uh, her as the uh, as okay. one of the four. Uh, she was in the umbrella they called the potential co-conspirators. Um, he uh, uh, told Ghislaine that she would not be. Um, um, named uh, as part of this, that she wouldn't have that attachment to the uh, Florida case. And in fact, uh, when she was um, initially um, arrested, um, her her lawyers were fighting back that, hey, you can't you can't do this because, you know, she was technically part of the um, uh, other um, given immunity as part of this broad uh, deal in 2008. So, you know, the, the feds can't go after her. However, that of course, uh, you know, completely uh, fell apart as part of her prosecution uh, by the Southern District, by Jeffrey Berman uh, uh, here in New York at the time. Um, but uh, she, she wasn't named because she did not want to be attached uh, and have that, uh, you know, in, in Google history her. as, you know, as okay, being one okay. of the uh, co-conspirators. Now, after he gets out of his BS, quote, jail term, uh, yeah. which is more than uh, nicer than how most people spend uh, any given year. Um, there's a there's a celebratory party for him. This this is the night that we've seen a fair amount of reporting on at the East 71st Street mansion in New York. He goes up to New York and it's like a who's who of American media, uh, Hollywood. It just to me shows you how disgusting and chummy my industry is media with um you know, the Hollywood crowd, the it crowd, they think whatever they, what they think is the it crowd on, on Wall Street and rubbing the elbows because they knew he just got out of jail for solicitation of sex or prostitution with a minor. He was a registered sex offender at that point. And you got well, why don't you tell us who was there and just fine was celebrating that night with Jeffrey Epstein? Well, there were there were many uh, celebrities. I, re- I recall that uh, I believe Katie Cork might have been. Yeah, might have been there. Stephanopoulos, um, Charlie Rose, Charlie Rose, uh, 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 Stephanopoulos uh, was there. I mean, it was a, it was a, Chelsea you know, Handler. A, oh, and also a, Woody Allen. Oh, what a shock! Well, Woody, uh, I have a picture in my book of Woody and Soon Yi walking, you know, with with Jeffrey outside of their outside of Jeffrey's house. I mean, they, they were of course pals. Oh, of course, Je- Je- kind of, Woody was Jeffrey's hero. W- wonder why? Uh, but Jeffrey, you know, he ha- he hired a publicist in New York. As yeah, as you do, and he he attempted to basically pass off what happened in Florida as nothing. There's a, I have a direct quote from him where he said, "He said I am not a sexual predator. I'm an offender. It's the difference between a murderer and a person who steals a bagel." That's how he explained what happened down in Florida to his high society media pals uh, who were invited uh, to New York, and he later. Um, uh, you know, he, he he basically put off in an off the record conversation with with a New York uh, uh, reporter, uh, George Rush, for the Daily News. Uh, Rush has, has since put it on record after Jeffrey Epstein's death. Jeffrey passed off what had happened to him in Florida. Uh, he he said these these girls were, uh, quote, like experienced sex workers. Um, he said uh, the statutory aspect of his prosecution was unfair uh, because he said, if I had done the same thing in a different state, there'd be no cause to arrest him. Uh, Jeffrey was making excuses about his um, um, his his dark side 
right up until the time he uh, 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 ended up behind bars, uh, where he was, where I quote uh, him telling a, an inmate, a, uh, um, one of the um, um, in, in, in jail companions, by, by basically saying, hey, listen, it wasn't a big deal. Uh, these, these girls were 15 and 16, 17. It wasn't like they were five or six. Jeffrey was always trying to justify uh, his actions, but it bothered him. It bothered him deep down. And he told um, he told one publicist, he said, you know, he said, I don't want to go to my I don't want my obituary to read uh, in the first paragraph uh, that uh, that I was a billionaire pervert. Um, so, uh, you know, he, he would he, he would he would tell people what he was doing was 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 nothing. But at the same time. I do think he was, you know, greatly concerned about his his reputation. Well, me- very- meanwhile, the, the people who are behind the scenes say that, and the women, the accusers say, are saying they heard him firsthand tell them, you know, he, the women who became his recruiters, um, the younger the better, the younger yeah. the better. Oh, yeah. He wanted it- even prepubescent girls, though I haven't seen any of them come forward. Fourteen is the youngest I've heard directly. Right. I mean, Haley Robson, who I who uh, wrote. Um, uh, for me, because she was a been a journalism student, I wanted to give her the opportunity to write something at the end of my book. I mean, she wrote that Jeffrey specifically told her the younger the better. Um, that's where that uh, that quote came from. That came mm-hmm. from uh, Haley. Well, um, so, but can I just round back though, Barry? Because that leads me to when did he stop? Like, why does the trail seem to go cold later in his life? Well, he after Florida after the two thousand and eight case uh, at that time. Uh, first of all, Ghislaine made the decision to um, um, end things with him. Uh, after the Florida case, um, she had been advised, listen, you know, you need to leave Jeffrey behind. He, he did not stop. However, it, was, it wasn't this feeding frenzy of girls that uh, Ghislaine, you know, where, where they recruit girls and mm. one girl would, would, would bring another. That, that went by the wayside. He was relying on um, international contacts to bring girls over from Soviet countries, uh, from Europe, from Brazil. Uh, he had a fixer uh, in Paris. Uh, you know, Jeffrey had an apartment in uh, a swanky apartment in Paris. Uh, he would abuse girls there. Um, he tried to do it away from uh, U.S. authorities. A lot of activities took place at his island in the little St. James in the Virgin Islands, where um, the um, district uh, um, attorney down there uh, um, is got an ongoing investigation and has uh, interviewed uh, uh, airport workers uh, who saw girls as young as 11 years old mm. uh, getting off of uh, private planes to be taken uh, to be ferried over to Jeffrey's Island. So Jeffrey was bringing girls in uh, from overseas um, to continue um, his abuse at his uh, at his house in the Virgin Islands, um, away from you know Florida, and and for the most part away from uh, New York, where authorities well, th- could see him. But the, this but- reminds me of. Let's just keep in mind what we now know, just to fill in some of those blanks. As you point out, yes, the island totally secluded. It was his island. Yeah. So once you, he gets a girl down there, God only yeah. knows. Um, and that we, the the women who have worked for him have testified. He had those little pinhole cameras all over his facilities. Yes. He he was filming everything, even in the bathroom. He had he was filming people. Yeah. And when the U.S. Attorney's Office finally arrested him for real not the BS 2008 thing, but yes. the 2019, right after they raided, arrested him on, on uh, at the airport, the private airport, um, they raided his home in Manhattan. And they found, this is according to the U.S. Attorney's Office in Manhattan, revealing some of the objects they found. A uh, couple of examples, hundreds of nude photos of girls and young women, CDs labeled miscellaneous nudes one, girl pics, nude or individual names of girls, notes and messages that allegedly back up new sex trafficking charges against him, a massage table, sex toys. A lot of the staffers talk about the sex toys all over the place everywhere. The massage tables, lubricant, a safe containing cash and diamonds and an expired passport with Epstein's picture and a fake name issued in the early 1980s in a foreign country uh, listing Saudi Arabia as his country of residence. Sure, that's what everyone's safe looks like it's like straight out of a novel of what a bad guy would be storing inside of his safe so okay they're all over the place can i just stop on this 
one one of the people, and it wasn't just Stephanopoulos and Woody Allen. By the way, Stephanopoulos has said he, he regrets going to that yeah. party. Yeah, they, um, they all do. They all say um, on the record that they naturally. regret having been brought there and they, you know, so forth. Naturally. But you know what? Do your homework. He was a convicted felon, convicted yeah. of hurting little girls, sex offender. Uh, secondly, one of the people who had no problem with his imprisonment and those charges was Prince Andrew. You hear so much about this today. Uh, he's he's one of the ones still on the hot seat. And yeah. he did. He went and visited Jeffrey Epstein at the New York mansion after Epstein got out of prison in the 2008 thing, jail, and is accused of a woman whose name we should spend some time on. And that's Virginia yeah. Roberts Jufre. Yeah. Virginia Roberts, when she was younger than that, and she got married. And... Um, I'll tell you this. I want to I want to know your take on her, Barry. But I looked into her before I did a long interview with Alan oh. Dershowitz. She's accused yeah. him, among others. She's in- accused well. a lot of guys, a lot. And um, I don't doubt her for a minute with respect to the Epstein story. I believe Epstein did abuse her and did probably traffic her as alleged. However, uh, I don't believe her with respect to all the men she accuses. And Alan happens to be one of them, not just because I'm friendly with the guy. I took a hard look at it. And this is, I was going to do a long interview with him. And I was going to, if if it went the wrong way for him, it wasn't going to be a pleasant interview. But I saw the number of inconsistencies in the story she was telling about him. I saw a reporter egging her on to name him because he was famous and it would get more attention, even though she hadn't named him yet and hadn't and hadn't even remembered him. And and many other pieces of evidence that led me to believe Virginia, I do believe, was a victim, but I do not believe she was a victim of Alan Dershowitz, among many other pieces of evidence. However, she's important because, among other guys, she's pointing the finger at Prince Andrew in a litigation that's heating up right now. He's yes. been forced to answer it. He could be forced to testify. He's in potentially some trouble. So tell us what we know about Virginia Roberts, her credibility and those claims. Well, th- th- listen, I mean, there's no question that, uh, um, you know, we've conducted interviews with uh, 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 family members. Her, fa- her father was a maintenance man at Mar-a-Lago. Uh, Ghislaine Maxwell recruited her uh, right out of Mar- Mar-a-Lago um, when she was, um, um, uh, she had remembered that she was 15 at the time. Um, it turns out she was um, uh, 16 at the time. Um, th- th- the fact is she was recruited into their world. Uh, she traveled with them. Um, she's listed on the flight manifests, uh, many, many dozens and dozens of trips. I mean, they, they you know, went, went around the world and so forth. Uh, there's no question that she was, you know, abused. Uh, she was the first um, uh, victim to come forward and um, make the allegation that she was trafficked out to uh, um a, uh, Prince Andrew, uh, you know, at least a half dozen um, uh, rich and powerful friends. Of, and this is this uh, is the one just to pause you there. This is the one that Amy Rohrbeck was complaining about in that now infamous tape um, on ABC. The satellite yeah. feed was going out when she was ripping on her staff and, and her, her superiors, I yeah. should say, for not. Ha- she's like, I had this whole story. I had Virginia Roberts. I had it all. And they wouldn't yeah. let me air it. Um, th- that was all about Virginia. Sorry. Go ahead. Correct. Now, I, I was going to say on, on, on Virginia, there's no question she has tremendous credibility d- directly related to Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. And she um, I- if she was able to be um, examined by prosecution specifically on that, um, uh, because she fits into the fits perfectly into the you know, I- into that pattern uh, and, and she you know, horrendous, horrible stuff, horrific stuff hap- happened to her. Uh, however, the prosecution made the decision um, not to um, um, bring her in as as one of the uh, minor victims, one through four, or her as, Maxwell as a fifth because of these, and you addressed it with, with Dershowitz, because of these credibility issues. And they were very fearful of... Um, um, you know, but while she, she could certainly testify to the grooming and the abuse, uh, the prosecution was fearful that um, um, Ghislaine's defense would take it in a completely other direction, muddy it with um, the uh, uh, discrepancies, um, you know, in her story and some of the allegations involving these other men, and it would become very complicated, very muddy, and it would take away from the um, direct testimonies of the 
for um, accusers that they decided uh, that they thought were relatively as best as they could determine airtight cases to present in a very clean cut fashion to the to the jury. Uh, so Virginia, who is, you know, th- th- without question, the most famous accuser because of her accusations against Prince Andrew uh, and others, is not um, testifying. She's off in Australia. Uh, she has not been. Um, she's you know she's not been coming forward uh, mm-hmm. as as part of the as part of the case. It is troubling, however, because she has been referenced in the case. And the jurors may be asking, well, why are we not going to hear from her? But the reason why they're not hearing from her is because of the um, um, discrepancies uh, over the course of the years. I mean, there's been other discrepancies with some of these accusers. You're you're talking about asking these girls who made some initial comments, some of them to law enforcement, uh, many of them in, in, in various civil depositions and so forth. You know, they're remembering things that happened to them, traumatic events that happened to them when they were 14 and 15 years old. There's no question that that there would be inconsistencies because they're now um, in their 40s, their testimony. Um, But but the um, uh, prosecution decided that Virginia was um, too much of a risk. Uh, and it would take the um, it could take the trial in in a different direction. Yeah, so they left her out. Smart, However, she is continuing now to pursue Prince Andrew, and that uh, is is uh, moving forward uh, here in New York. And uh, you know, I mean, I think with Prince Andrew, we have the the photograph of the two of them together yeah. taken at that Jeffrey Epstein took a photo of of uh, Prince Andrew and uh, Virginia together with Elaine in the in, in the background at Elaine's house in, uh, in in London. I mean, there is some tremendous evidence and, and proof of that uh, um, relationship. And he and says Prince, he doesn't remember ever meeting her. That Prince Andrew denies- has done everything he can to uh, put his foot in his mouth yes. in interviews he's done overseas and so forth. He comes across as a absolutely terrible uh, witness. Yes. So this is why he got booted from royal duties, because he made the yes. mistake of giving an interview that was an absolute disaster. And the, before yes. you knew it, he lost his royal duties. Um, but he does, for the record, deny her allegations. So yes. He doesn't remember her. Her side's pointing out when he got sued by her. Uh, his response didn't seem all that surprised. He texted, I think, Ghislaine or, or Jeffrey saying, uh, we need to talk about Virginia Roberts. It didn't sound, yes. you know, it could have been just the name of this woman who mysteriously sued me or it could be the way he said it made one believe he he knew and he wanted to have a conversation about her we'll see that'll play out but she does have credibility issues as do a lot of accusers and you know right. it's, but, but it's hard to, to pick quickly, up i mean but I, i'm just saying I, to, to your point I, earlier she, that, that they picked women who did have certain issues they were very clever um in their general approach now he went through hundreds of women so he wasn't that clever with everybody but certainly with the ones that he made his constant and, you know, concubines or whatever you want to call someone like Virginia Roberts, his victim, um, they're going to have some issues. And that's not to excuse the inconsistencies. It's just one of the challenges prosecutors are up against. I'll give you the last word before I go to break. No, I, I, Virginia, I mean, I, I view her and all the accusers who have come forward as as, as courageous women. Um, and, and they had their childhoods taken away. They had they, they have suffered. Uh, like, uh, you know, I, I have a teenage daughter. I, I, I can't think about what they what they went through at the hands of uh, Ghislaine and, and Jeffrey Epstein. So yeah. she's courageous along with with, with all of these other. Uh, well, think about uh, it. I mean, it's hard. It's hard to go up against anybody and make this kind of an accusation. And it, yes. you're talking about somebody who's who hangs out with former presidents and princes yes. and heads of industry and universities. Good God. You can understand why they were like, this is not. It's not worth it. And then the women who came before me, by the way, were either ignored by the police or diminished by the FBI or lied to by the feds. I mean, yeah, the the DAC was stacked, uh, stacked. Okay, next we got to get to Jeffrey Epstein's um, famous friends, including Trump and his mysterious death. Don't go away. Before we finish off with uh, the royals, uh, Virginia has alleged that in that picture where she looks very young, he's got his arm around her at Ghislaine's house in London. She said that night she um, she uh, let me get it in front of me. 
He asked her how old she was. She said, how, I'd, how old do I look? He guessed 17. She said he later would grope me, touch my breasts, my behind, licked my toes, the arches of my feet. I mean, these are specific details. Made yeah. love to me without a condom. And that the next day, Jeffrey Epstein paid me $10,000. She alleges she was, quote, forced to have sex with Prince Andrew many times in London, New York, and the Virgin Islands, I think, are the places. Yeah. She says he knew I was a minor. Um, and he says he had zero recollection of ever meeting her and that the photo may be fake. Um, Epstein, I've read two different things about him and the Royals. I've read that he was actually invited to a party. It was Prince Andrew's 40th and, and Prince Charles's 50th and Prince William's 18th birthday. And that even the Queen and Prince Philip may have been there and that Jeffrey and Ghislaine were invited and then there was a separate party for Princess Beatrice, that's Andrew's daughter, yes. her 18th birthday that he had. I mean, is it, did Jeffrey Epstein party with the Queen? We, we have never seen any actual photos of the, of the two of them together. And in fact, at the, um, at the trial, uh, prosecution released uh, uh, an image of the two of them at the Queen's uh, personal um, uh, cabin at uh, Balmoral. Uh, this shows you how... Uh, what incredible access uh, th th they had to uh, literally being um, uh, uh, inches away from uh, uh, from the queen. Um, Prince uh, Prince Andrew, there's no question, opened the the, the doors to uh, the royal kingdom for uh, uh, Jeffrey and uh, um, uh, Ghislaine. There's a, there's an image of. Uh, Ghislaine, one of her friends, Kevin Spacey, sitting on um, uh, um, what would have been, uh, I think, the official like royal throne uh, for photo uh, uh, opportunities and so forth. Um, Prince Andrew was in deep with with, with Jeffrey and, and, and Ghislaine. And uh, uh, of course, he regrets <laughs> that association now. Mm. Uh, because it's destroying his his life. He's having all, as you pointed out, all of his royal duties taken away from him. Um, but uh, again, he was collected by uh, Jeffrey, uh, and, and Jeffrey had the goods on him, as Jeffrey has the goods or had the goods on uh, many other um, famous and powerful people. Well, that's that's yeah. what people wonder. You know, did in elsewhere in that safe because when they raided his uh florida place and they arrested him in yeah. 2008 he had clearly just disconnected hard drives before they got somebody clearly tipped him off and he he had yeah. moved and hidden hard drives and then something similar happened when he was arrested in 2019 they had hard drives that they found or cds and then they left them there because they weren't within the scope of the search warrant to actually Correct. look at them and then they were gone when they went back so that's one of the big questions like what was on those what was on them? Did, we, did yes. we see Prince Andrew with with a young girl? Did we see Bill Clinton, Donald Trump? I mean, these are these are some of the massive questions that loom over. Did Jeffrey Epstein really kill himself? Right. That's one of the, the things. Um, so that's that's Prince Andrew. And who knows what we're going to learn if that trial goes forward. Um, then there's Bill Clinton. By the way, is it why? Why are there so many people who have been, you know, accused credibly of sexual m misconduct? You know, from Charlie Rose to Woody Allen to Bill Clinton to um, Kevin Spacey to you know, it's like there's a lot of yeah. questionable people he that surround him. This was, I, I mean, you know, I have in the book the photo from um, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Beatrice's uh, party where Jeffrey and uh, Ghislaine. Uh, have their arms around Harvey Weinstein. The three of oh them are, are, of course. Are, are, are all, all photographed together there. I mean, this was the circle of uh, of friends that uh, that that Jeffrey had uh, men uh, with, uh, with with similar dark uh, 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 you know lifestyles. Mm. Well, you talk in the book about. I mean, Bill Clinton was on Jeffrey's lolita express which was the nickname for his aircraft um at least four times overseas to africa a couple of times yes. now i will say uh it was epstein's quote personal massage therapist on on board with them who she said i heard her say in an interview nothing untoward happened when bill clinton right. was on those flights like i and and you know she is saying that untoward things happened with epstein elsewhere but she yes. says not not when clinton was there so 
take it for what it's worth. Um, with respect to Donald Trump, you've done some reporting of your own about their relationship and some party at Mar-a-Lago. Can you inform us on yeah. that? Well, my my book on Jeffrey Epstein came out of the previous book that I had written on uh, called All the President's Women, Donald Trump and the Making of a Predator. And it was through the development of those sources uh, in Florida that where I began to see this much deeper, you know, connection. And in, at the time when that book was being published, uh, it was um, uh, right at the time of uh, uh, after Epstein had uh, um, um, died behind bars that the uh, uh, my uh, book editor uh, said, you know, you got to go now focus on on, on, on Jeffrey Epstein. So that kind of le- le- led me to um, the, um, uh, the the Epstein book. But uh, as I point out in the book, Jeffrey Epstein said to a very, very close source, and I, I, I can't give up the, the person's name, but in- incredibly connected to Jeffrey Epstein and extremely close. And Jeffrey Epstein said, if the public knew uh, what I know about uh, uh, the Trumps and the uh, and the Clintons, uh, there wouldn't be a, a 2016 election. Uh, wow. Jeffrey Jeffrey claims he had the goods on on uh, both of those men. Of course, uh, um, Donald Trump, like Bill Clinton, denies uh, any wrongdoing. Uh, however, we you know th- 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 there's a lot of material there showing um, Trump and. Uh, uh, um, particularly um, uh, Epstein, partying together. They once attended a party at Mar-a-Lago, uh, just the two of them, uh, Trump and Epstein, with, um, uh, uh, I think it was more than a dozen. Um, yeah, your uh, book says 28. Women. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they were caught up in, um, and I mean, there's deeper allegations that I, that I put forward in both books about one uh, lawsuit uh, from a girl who claimed she was 13 uh, that uh, uh, was um, um, filed at at the time of the, in 2016, but then um, withdrawn uh, involving both Epstein and uh, Trump. Um, Of course, you know, there's been complete denials all around, but there's no question that there was a a true uh, friendship and uh, the two of them partied together. And they knew a lot of the same people. I mean, there was, you know, when Donald Trump had his modeling agency, um, you know, th- th- there were um, modeling agents and, and heads of fashion companies and so forth uh, that Epstein uh, were all, you know, where, where the two of them were part of this much um, um, larger world involving uh, young women. I mean, I, I make several allegations in the in the Trump book uh, involving uh, Trump and uh, and younger women. Um, of course, well, Trump, we Trump really issued this statement saying, um, well, it was a comment, I think, to a magazine about his relationship with Epstein, saying yeah. that they they did know each other. Um, I, by, by the way, I should mention that Clinton denies anything untoward. Yes. And so does Trump. But uh, I want to get the I'm just looking for the for the quote um, that's that Trump said specifically. OK, here it is. Uh, Donald Trump in 2002 to New York Magazine. He's a terrific guy. Epstein's a terrific guy. It is even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. <laughs> that is so yeah. classic Trump. I mean, that's just classic. Donald Trump. Donald Trump has said since then that that those words were manufactured for him, that they were created uh, for that uh, particular article that he. Uh, denies that uh, that you know that that he actually said that, but we do know of a of a very close uh, uh, friendship between the two of them, particularly in the early years. And and Ghislaine was and this is before even his two thousand eight arrest. I should I should point out. Oh yes, yeah. I mean, and and in fact, Jeffrey Epstein has told people um, uh, and it goes against the official Trump story, but Jeffrey Epstein claims that he introduced uh, Melania to uh, Donald Trump. Oh gosh. That's not something you want to put in a wedding toast. Um, so, OK, so now finally, to their credit, I mean, I will say there was one girl, Courtney, who was recruited by him as a, she was a victim. And then she was made sort of a helper, you know, for lack of a better term, to go recruit other girls. She recruited yes. a lot of them. 
And she was one of the ones really angry when that 2008 sweetheart deal was cut and she hadn't been consulted. And she was a woman on a mission from 2008 to 2019. She wasn't the only one to get some accountability and stayed on this case like a dog with a bone. Like, I just don't care. I'm just I will devote the rest of my life to getting some accountability from this guy. And that's really, you know, the women not just refusing to give this up is what finally led, I think, to the 2019 arrest it was a different climate right we had yeah. trump as president the me too movement was you know underway or had already started at least and it was a different climate in the country so they he did get arrested he did he find a found a u.s attorney who took this more seriously um he gets arrested unexpectedly to him which was you know important um and the biggest decision then was do we give him bail and the women yeah. were hardcore against bail because they knew from experience how connected he was. That if he got out, he'd hide everything. He'd work every connection. He'd have it managed such that they were dead in the water again. And at that bail hearing, the judge did something extraordinary. He let some of the women who showed up just to see him get sentenced to, to jail while, while pending, they are hoping, he let them speak. Yeah. And those yes. to this day are the only women who have gotten to confront him face yes. to face with what he did. It's incredibly dramatic. And then good for them for finding the nerve to stand up and do it. Because usually your lawyer would be like, don't say anything unless I'm there. We'll do, we'll cross it. You know, we'll do it in the civil case when we're suing yeah. for millions of dollars. But they did get up there and he did not get bail. And that was a big decision. He had to go, be remanded. And then there begins probably the biggest of the mystery of them all you know so many men where are the hard drives you know what why did the feds give him the sweetheart deal like what was the motivation and what what happened to him in that jail what the new york times just did a foia request uh to the jail trying to find out what happened they were denied they got their legal team involved they won the access to the documents just this week they reported that there were anomalies right upon check-in I don't know what you call it. booking, I guess. It's not check-in. It's not a hotel. Um, they said he was a black man. Um, they had a couple of other weird things about him. They said he wasn't a person who was a public figure. You know, he, he was, of course. Yeah. They put him in Gen Pop originally. That wasn't supposed to happen. Then they rectified it about a day later. They put him in a cell. Then, then there was one attempted suicide, which I'd like to ask you about, whether yeah. it really was and what kind of thing happened. And then... He was supposed to be kind of on suicide watch. He had he had told all the doctors he wasn't suicidal. It's absurd. I have so much to live for. Why would I kill myself? Um, and then they they were they were supposed to put a roommate in with him, a cellmate. Yeah. Again, I'm talking about like it's a dorm cellmate, and they didn't. And then those two guards that night, the cameras were off. They were supposed to be patrolling. They weren't. They they found from the records that they had been searching the internet for shopping and sports. Um, but there's just so much of a smell around the whole thing. And given the history you and I've been discussing for two hours, people have real questions. So your take on it. Yeah. I, I just want to add that the, because of the reporting done by the Miami Herald, uh, yes. going to the Acosta deal and so forth, that really uh, ignited um, public interest again in in basically pushing the feds into, I think, yeah. acting on material that they've had in their files all those years from the Julie original Brown. Uh, FBI investigation uh, that began, um, you know, in, in the mid 2000s. Uh, but it was that Herald story that really, I think, uh, uh, in, in the Me Too era, really pushed them forward to um, um, Jeffrey Berman's office here in, in New York, the Southern Good District, point. to really yeah, go after uh, uh, Epstein. And I write in the book how dramatic it was that they were fearful that uh, um, when his plane was returning to Titoboro, that he would have been um, passed on the information that leaked to him and that he would pull Roman Polanski and uh, divert the plane, um, you know, to another country and so forth. But he did land and they were able to, um, you know, apprehend him and uh, uh, put him in handcuffs. Huge, huge. So when he went into the jail... Do you believe how do you know how he allegedly attempted to take his own life the first time? Well, we 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 as part of the book. Uh, I, I was working with Philip Messing, who had been uh, the um, legendary uh, crime reporter for The New York Post uh, for um, uh, decades. And uh, Phil uh, and I worked together and uh, we we spent uh, uh, 
you know, a, a year investigating what went on behind bars there. We had a lot of the information in the book um, uh, long before the New York Times uh, sued uh, Bureau of Prisons for that uh, report. Uh, we interviewed uh, two of the um, um, uh, Epstein's inmate companions who spent were the only uh, real people who actually talked to him um, in the days leading up to his uh, his, his death. And uh, Epstein uh, report in the book uh, that there were actually, um, um, we believe, two suicide attempts before um, he ended up taking his life. Uh, one was um, uh, only reported, uh, but the incompetency in that jail, the MCC, uh, there's a reason why that Manhattan jail has been shut down. Plan. It's because it was just you know, run horrifically, as, as you pointed out, they put him in gen pop. He was surrounded by uh, um, uh, gang members. Uh, they were trying to shake him down. Um, uh, Epstein was I can I can tell you this and write about this extensively in the book. Uh, Epstein fell apart uh, behind bars. Unlike Ghislaine Maxwell, who I actually think is, is made from tougher stock, who has been willing to um, put up with with uh, the, 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 the many, many months she's been held uh, waiting trial. Uh, Epstein was a basket case. Uh, this was a guy who I said uh, needed to have things. He needed the temperature in his bedroom mm. set uh, one way. Uh, he needed all these things. And when he was behind bars, he had no control over anything. And he was also terrorized, as he told these gentlemen, uh, that he was going to be bullied, like he had been bullied as a boy back in Coney Island. And uh, uh, I do believe, uh, based on the reporting we did, uh, that uh, despite um, crazy circumstances, the, the guards at night falling asleep and so forth, I do believe that he took his took his life because for someone to enter that cell, it would have had to have been a massive conspiracy. Uh, there were safeguards in terms of the main door locks were controlled by the uh, central jail's um, uh, office uh, that had nothing to do with the uh, the guards who were um, um, in the shoe uh, that particular night. Um, to have placed someone in there to take his life uh, would have been an absolute massive uh, conspiracy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we, we don't know the uh, specifics of the secret suicide attempt uh, in which he was uh, then put behind suicide watch. We know in the in the in the second case that he had a, um, uh, a cellmate. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein told two different stories. Uh, he said he. Uh, um, um, uh, you know, the, the cellmate found him on the floor. Uh, uh, there were uh, marks on Jeffrey Epstein's neck and so forth. We don't know. You know, he was telling different people different accounts of, of what was happening. Uh, what we do know is that he should have never, ever been left alone in the cell by himself. And the night he decided, if he did take his life, was the one night when the uh, cell, other cellmate that he had had just been transferred out and another one was supposed to come uh, the next day. And so it's Jeffrey Epstein had this one specific window if he was going to uh, hang himself. And uh, uh, it appears, uh, you know, that's what he did because he wasn't going to live a life behind bars. He knew he was going to be convicted. Uh, and he wasn't, as he's to told these, indicated to these cellmates that this was not the type of life that he would um, be able to live. Could he have paid off the guards to, to look the other way? Uh, you know, the, the guards have been through a, uh, a, a full investigation. There's been no indication that they uh, uh, received any uh, money. We, we, we do know that Jeffrey Epstein had paid off, um, had been extorted um, um, uh, by some other um, um, guys in, in, you know, in jail early on. Um, for uh, out of fear, out of safety and so forth. But there's nothing concrete that shows that uh, uh, he had paid off uh, anyone, any officials in the jail. Wow. Leaving us all to wonder whether his many secrets died with him or whether Ghislaine Maxwell uh, knows more than she's letting on. Uh, a little more on that when we come back right after this break. Speaking of Ghislaine Maxwell, 
<laughs> Barry, what do we think she knows the answer to all of these questions? What what did Bill Clinton do? What did Donald Trump do? What did Prince Andrew do? You know, did his secrets die with him or do you think she knows the answers? Oh, I think I think she knows she knows a lot. I mean, I was early on, I thought that possibly upon her arrest that there might be a deal with the government. I mean, you know, this is someone who is turning um, uh, 60. She, uh, she's 59 right now. She turned 60 on on, on, on Christmas Day. Uh, the difference of doing 10 years uh, behind bars uh, and still having something left of her life, as opposed to, you know, the 70 uh, years that she's facing on this uh, particular trial. And she's also facing 10 additional years in a separate trial of uh, perjury trial for statements she's made in um, uh, lying in, in depositions. Uh, I thought that she would do a deal. I thought that she might give up some names to the government and uh, get a um, um, uh, some type of sentence because at this point, Jeffrey is dead. And what does she ha- you know, ha- have to lose? But she has remained tight lipped. Um, she denies any wrongdoing. And uh, I, I, I think that she's going to take uh, their secrets to her grave. Um, th- there's no question about that. Um, she... what, what about what about secret option number two, which is Epstein was a pervert. He was a bad guy. He was a criminal. But it, I don't want to say he was the only one, but that Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton and Donald Trump didn't do anything to those young women. And she doesn't actually have the secrets to tell. I mean, her lawyers say that she wasn't ever offered a deal, that they were not offered a deal. Um, um, I, I do believe that she knows a great deal about very, you know, about their powerful friends uh, from um, uh, scientists to world leaders, uh, the people that they associated with. Jeffrey Epstein had, in fact, he had asked the Palm Beach police. This is how tight the, the cops were down there in 2005 with the, you know, w- with the millionaires who lived uh, in, in, in Palm Beach. He said that uh, people were stealing from him. Uh, so they the police helped him install a, a surveillance system uh, at the Palm Beach mansion. Of course, he mm-hmm. was using that surveillance system uh, to uh, capture uh, his famous, uh, I believe, his famous guests with um, um, some of these uh, girls. Uh, I, I do believe that Jeffrey... Um, um, and it shows the, the history, the pattern of how he made money. Uh, Jeffrey was about collecting people, about having goods on people. And I believe it carried through all the way um, to um, his, his you know, final days of um, um, abuse uh, at his home in the, uh, in the Virgin Islands. Uh, before they were tipped off in Florida before it was raided there. And in fact, one of the four co-conspirators, uh, has been alleged to have uh, uh, removed all the hard drives. So when the search warrant was issued, um, they didn't have the uh, uh, the hard drives. That w- where they are now remains a mystery. That's the um, question. Where is yeah. this blackmail material that he had yeah. possibly over all these people? Where are those hard drives? Why in that list that we got from the U.S. Attorney in Manhattan, you know, it says CDs labeled nudes and girls and so on, yeah. but w- there's not an allegation of videotape with Prince Andrew. You know what I mean? If, if that happened, yes. you know Jeffrey Epstein had a picture of it. So where's that oh. stuff at if it existed? Well, I, I, I write in the book that there is a, uh, it's, it's a, it's a crazy spy story. There's a, there's a gentleman in Russia who was affiliated with um, 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 one of the lead detectives on the case. Um, um, Detective Don't tell me his Carey, name is Christopher Steele. <laughs> who, 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 no, no, not Christopher Steele. Thank who God. has uh, the lead detective, as the story goes, was so sickened by the slap on the wrist that Jeffrey Epstein gave, uh, was given that he turned over to this man, allegedly, um, uh, copies of uh, some incriminating material that they had that uh, you know that the FBI didn't want or or, or, or wouldn't look at, um, and this man ended up in Russia and uh, tells a story there that has been corroborated by um, some other journalists that um, um, you know the Russian government may have uh, the goods on, on on some of this blackmail material that they may be sitting on. Um, material related to um, um, powerful people connected to uh, 
Jeffrey Epstein. I forgot to mention Bill Gates. He was one of the guys who was connected with Epstein and on the plane. I mean, all these people deny knowing anything about him and his sketchy history. And that could very well be true. You know, we don't know. But man, there were a lot of sketchy people who uh, loved to hang out with him. So that leads me to this. The the Epstein fund. Is it gone? Um, My understanding is he was worth someplace between five and six hundred million when he died, or at least that, that's what I read, that they paid out one hundred and twenty one million dollars to one hundred and thirty five people. They'd only expected about one hundred claimants. Two hundred and twenty five showed up. They did a vetting process. Yes, they paid one hundred twenty one. Some of these women got millions. Some got less. His estate also paid almost two hundred million to the federal government in estate taxes. By my calculations, that's about three hundred and twenty million. There should be between two hundred and three hundred million dollars left. Where is it? Can people still get money? Uh, what's the status of that? Well, the, the compensation fund, which was which was actually directed by uh, some individuals who were actually connected to the 9-11 uh, compensation fund. It was, it was a very, you know, w- well run um, a separate entity that had nothing to do with Jeffrey Epstein's uh, uh, lawyers and so forth. I do know that the, the, the four victims who were testifying um, for the government uh, each of them received between $1.5 million and $5 million from the compensation fund. And everything has been sold. His uh, house in Palm Beach has been sold. His jets have been sold. His cars have been sold. Um, the the um, um, New York uh, mansion is being uh, renovated right now. Someone, a wealthy individual, has, has purchased that. So uh, his estate has been uh, liquidated. Mm. Along and with the house soul. in Palm Beach... Uh, has been actually destroyed. It's been, you know, knocked down, which uh, uh, is is a is a good thing. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's what it, that's what it should happen to all of them. Who would I realize Manhattan real estate is what yeah. it is? No, who would live in such a place? Come on, like, come on. Where's your where's your moral mm. compass? Well, maybe uh, we'll maybe they'll find something when they're when they're renovating. Mm, maybe there's something mm. buried away that the uh, that the FBI didn't find. So who good knows? Point. Well, um, listen, we're taping this before the Maxwell trial wraps up. Any you want to make any predictions by the time it airs? We know, we may know the answer. What do you think? Well, this was certainly not a, you know, a slam dunk case for the prosecution. Um, I mean, I, I of course, in my gut, am, am, am hoping that uh, justice will be served here and that um, um, Ghislaine will be spending a considerable amount of time of the remainder of her life behind bars. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think she absolutely deserves it. I think she was his partner in crime. Um, I, I quote in the book, uh, an inter- uh, not an interview, but a conversation she had with a close friend in 1997, in which she said that she couldn't um, fulfill Jeffrey's uh, insatiable sexual appetite. It was impossible to meet. And she felt obliged to bring him young girls to fulfill his sexual needs. And this woman was completely horrified with what, she, what Ghislaine was telling her. And Ghislaine went on to say, uh, this is a direct quote. They're nothing. These girls, they are trash. And to me, that sums up the only way she could justify in her mind to go down this dark road with Jeffrey Epstein is to not have a feeling whatsoever for any of these girls mm-hmm. uh, in her mind. She she didn't feel anything for them. They, they were, in her words, trash. And uh, I, I think that's the only way that that, that she um, um, was able to get through this. What a note on which to leave it. Barry Levine, again, the book is called The Spider. Check it out. So appreciate you coming on. Hope we can talk well, again. Thank you. Uh, well, our true crime Christmas week continues all week. Nothing says Christmas like a week of crime. <laughs> um, but let's face it, we love talking about these cases because they're fascinating and they're kind of case studies in human nature, too. Don't miss any of it. You can download The Megan Kelly Show right now on Apple, Pandora, Spotify, and Stitcher so that you get a little tap on the shoulder when the new shows drop. Um, and also check us out on YouTube.com slash Megan Kelly. Thank you all so much for listening. <laughs>